But let me ask you, you another question. Is it possible not to compete? Is it possible? Sometimes when we talk about competition, we see it in a negative light. Because so much wounds and hurts have come from, from there. If you have children, not just one child, let's say you have three, ch three children, definitely you look at who's mother, who's more spiritual, you know, the competition comes. And you have kids in the church, uh, oh, you're 10 year old, you're 10 year old, why are you taller, why are you shorter, <laughs> no, that kind of thing. People just compete naturally, subconsciously. And who's more gifted, who's more spiritual, who do better in school, and when you serve, who serve better, who can preach better, you know. And my co workers always have that problem sometimes, you know, who preach better, you know, you know uh, who counsel better, who shepherd better. I can say the same things as Pastor Vincent. But people listen to Pastor Vincent, they don't listen to me, you know. So the sense of competition is always there. So, so that thing we know, it, it sometimes when it creates strife and conflict, we felt, oh, we don't want competition. But that is a reality, I'm telling you. It is not possible to not compete. And some of us hate it. Why? Because we were very much wounded by it. Okay? But right now, what we are talking here is the glory of Jesus. Amen? Okay? The glory of Jesus. He is the Messiah. He represents everything about the holy kingdom, about the holy greatness, glory of Jesus. He is the only one we will want to receive praises from. So in fact, if you are talking about the glory of Jesus, who can be closer to Him? Who can understand His heartbeat better? For that matter, we should compete. Amen to that? We should compete. We should, because right now, we are talking about a spiritual, heavenly greatness. So if you just want to be indifferent to that, or you, if you just want to be too modest, I don't think that's right. <laughs> I don't think that is right. You know, that would mean you don't even care about its value. You don't care about it. If you care nothing about spiritual competition, chances are you are in a worldly competition. Amen? <laughs> now, you cannot be neutral. If I care nothing about the glory of you, wanting to love, to serve, to be more spiritual, now, if you care nothing about that thing, chances are you are subtly competing with others in worldly stuff, worldly matters. And it could be your jobs, your salary, your achievements, your looks, your results in school. Probably, we are competing about that. So, what I'm saying here is, you cannot get out of competition in this world. But second, what is more important, young people, you must be in the right competition. Amen? Okay, a spiritual competition towards heavenly greatness. And the Apostle Paul has shown us he know that better than anyone else. Now, can we, can we turn to Philippians? Chapter 2, verse 3, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Now, beware of the unhealthy competition, the worldly competition, because it's going to breed conceit. Okay, it makes you selfish. It gives you selfish ambition. Now, not about that. So, should we compete? Now, look at verse 3. Verse, uh, no, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 14. But the apostle said, here, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now, the apostle Paul was talking about a race here. The background is a race, an athletic race. He is running, running for Jesus. Okay, for Christ. He said, I press on towards the goal. Okay, to win the prize. There is a prize to win, people. In competition, for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now, 
He wants to win something. You see, when we run a Christian race, we should be running with so much focus to get a prize for ourselves. No. Is it wrong to get a prize? No. Selfishness is the problem, but not with this kind of self-interest. Can you differentiate selfishness and self-interest? Every one of us running a race, we want to win something. So, I always hear Christians say, Pastor Vincent, I've done my best. Doing your best wasn't what Paul said. Did you find any word that say in the scripture, do your best? Did you? No. What do you find? Win the prize. Right? You must win something when you are in this Christian walk. Okay? So you must ask yourself, what is the inheritance you are getting at the end of the day by attending church every Sunday, serving the Lord, taking Bible study? Have you fulfilled the calling that God has given you? Have you finished the task that God has given you? Moses led the Israelites through the wilderness. That is his calling. He finished it. Joshua, Caleb, lead people into the land of Canaan. David established the kingdom of Israel. They have won the prize. They have win something. It's not just doing my best. Doing your best. I'm doing my best for God. You know, I try to lead the worship. I try to lead Bible study. I lead, try to go to church. You know, doing, a, doing your best wasn't what God said. Young people, winning that prize that God has given you. No. Let's turn to another verse. First Corinthians. I was very touched when, when Paul said all those things here. Chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace to me was not without effect. No, I work harder than all of them. Who are the them? You know, the apostles. Because you read in verse 9, For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I'm doing what I'm doing now. I am what I am now. And now I work harder than all of them. You see, there is a comparison now. There is a competition now. Yeah, not I, but the grace of God that was with me. So, you see, Paul made an explicit comparison between himself and the apostles by saying outrightly that he worked harder than all of them. He didn't try to be too modest about the effort or the pursuit that he's doing for God. And I really give thanks for someone like Paul. Paul is someone who has demonstrated what is godliness, radical Christian living. There is a fervent pursuit in knowing God, in serving his people more than the believers around him so that he could win the prize. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. And he worked harder then all the apostles, but he was quick to add, right here. He was quick to add, yet it was not I, but the grace of God. Hallelujah to that, okay? So he, he was always quick. He started off, by the grace of God, I become what I am. Then I work harder, I work harder. I don't know why I keep working harder. Something in me just stirred me and keep going and going, you know. But at the end of it, I realized that's the grace of God again. So start from grace and by grace. 